Hey, so today's lesson is all about maximum and minimums. And so we're going to talk about two different types of questions in particular. One is where they give you a word problem and they basically give you some kind of scenario like you see in front of you here where they want it as large or as small as possible. The second type is where they want the maximum area of a rectangle, both involving the same kind of idea. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, and there's really like a recipe, so to speak, that you should follow every time you see these questions. And so I'm just going to slide this little piece over here and give you those steps. The first thing that you want to do is you want to see that they're going to introduce the variables. And you need to kind of declare what those variables are. Sometimes it says arbitrary is like this is one number and this is the other number. Sometimes it's, you know, this is the largest number, this is the smallest number, or, you know, whatever. But it, you're going to introduce the variables. The second thing you're going to do is write one of the variables in terms of the other words in terms of one variable. And what I mean by that is there's going to be some quantity that you're going to be looking for that needs to be maximized or minimized. And by doing so, you're going to write it in terms of one variable. And you'll see how this plays out here in a minute. Then you're going to solve. And of course, maximum and minimum should immediately remind you of derivative. And of course, that would mean that to, in order to solve that, you're going to have to do the derivative of some kind. And then you're going to answer the question. So with that being said, I'm going to kind of use that little recipe as we approach this. So I'm going to just slide this over here so you can see it as we work. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is this says two non-negative numbers have a sum of three. So there's the first thing. And you'll notice I'm not even reading the whole thing. Uh, the way I typically approach it is I start with that first sentence. I'm going to chunk it out. I'm only really going to like take that for what it means. So I have two variables, x plus y, and that's going to equal three. You'll notice I've just introduced my variables here. I'm not asking for those let x statements like you did back in the day. We don't need to waste time. We've got two minutes of question. So I'm taking that. There I am. I'm introducing. I got an x and a y. How should these numbers be chosen so that the sum of one and the square of the other is as large or as small as possible? So we've got a quantity. And you're going to notice we're going to typically use q here. And we want it to be as large or as small as possible. So what does that mean? That means that one of the numbers, and I'm just going to choose randomly, let's say x, and the square of the other one is as large or as small as possible. All right, so I've got x plus y squared. So that really is introducing what's happening in this question. Now what number two is basically telling me is from number two, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write it in terms of one variable. In other words, you see how we have x and we have y being represented here. I don't want, I want one variable. I don't want to do some major implicit differentiation here. What I'd rather do is write it all in terms of one letter. Well, we've got some information here. In fact, um, I can solve, for example, and say, hey, that's the same thing as y equals 3 minus x, and then use that in place of y. So that would be x plus, and I'd have 3 minus x squared. And then using that, um, we could easily see what that would equal, and we could combine stuff. So I've got negative 5x, I've got this x squared, and I've got plus 9. That equals q. All right, so all I've done is simplified what I've got. That's up to step two. Step three says, now solve the maximum problem. As I pointed out before, maximum and minimum needs derivative. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the derivative. And so that would be 2x minus 5, right? And so I have 2x minus 5. I want to see maximum or minimum. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, OK, I want to know when that equals 0, right? That's how we know our maximum minimums. That's when the slope would be 0, that it's highest or its lowest spot. And so we solve that to get x equals 5 halves. All right. So you might think to yourself, all right, so I've got 5 halves. But Mrs. Madison is supposed to find it as large and as small. So where does that all fall into play? Remember, we've got an x and a y here. So the y, then, would have to be what's going to make you know, f 3 minus 5 halves, or rather 6 halves, minus, so that would be 1 half. And so we look and we say, okay, all I have is this one point, 5 half, 5 halves, 1 half. But remember, we have two numbers that add up to equal 3. And really, what's the smallest x could be? The smallest it could be is 0, right? But the largest it could be is 3. And then, of course, we have this 5 halves. So there, I actually have some options. If I plug 0 in here, let's just follow how this works here. I would have y would then be 3. 
And so my quantity would be 0 plus 3 squared or 9. If x is 5 halves and y is 1 half, then my quantity instead would be 5 halves plus 1 half squared or 1 fourth. And so that would be 11 fourths. And then if x is 3, y would have to be 0. And so that quantity would be 3. So let's look and now compare what's as large or as small as possible. Let's start with the largest. Which one is the largest? And of course, I hope, anyway, it's pretty obvious, that 9 is the largest. So how would I choose those numbers? I would choose that x, or x would be 0, and y would have to be 3. That would give me the largest. I just didn't put my t on there, sorry. Um, and what about the smallest? What's the smallest? Well, it would have to be 11 fourths, because that's smaller than 3. And so the two numbers I would pick for my smallest would be 5 halves and 1 half. And so that would give you your minimum. Good? All right, now let's look at another example here. Now we've got another kind of question here. And again, it's the same kind of idea. You might think, well, how does this relate? But it still is the same idea. It says to maximize the area. So let's start with that. You have the area, and what does that mean? Area of a rectangle is length times width. And since we have x and y, that would mean x times y. That's what we want to be maximized. That's the quantity that we want to be the largest. But as we pointed out in our recipe, um, we want to express this as one variable. So I don't want it with an x and a y, but rather, is there a way that I can express one letter, and I'm just going to use y, is there a way that I can write that in terms of x? So that's the part that you need to think about. Well, how do I figure that out? This value here, this height, is determined by whatever this value is for x when I plug it into this line, right? So to know what that equation of that line is, let's try and process them. My slope would be going up 40, right, and over, right, if I was to figure out the slope of this line, to get to here, I would have to go, right, up 40, but then I'd have to go over 20. Are you with me? And so how do we get this? This would be, or rather, how do I get from this point to this point? We would go down 40, and we'd have to go over 20. So um, let's just rewrite this. This would be y equals negative 20x. And what was the y-intercept? Right? And so I just put negative 20. I apologize. 40 divided by 20 is 2. So that is the y. That's how we can rewrite y. So I'd have x, and that'd be negative 2x plus 40. That's another way of writing y. And so just to simplify this a little bit, that gives me negative 2x squared plus 40x. And now we're going to maximize, right, or minimize. And so I'm going to do the derivative, which gives me negative 4x plus 40. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. And so I have negative 4x equals negative 40, or you could have moved the 4x, I suppose and gotten 10. So when x is 10, let's think through this, what would y be? We just use that other equation, negative 2 times 10 plus 40. So that would mean that y is 20. And so my area then would be 10 times 20, or 200. And of course, the minimum of this would be 0, right? That's the smallest it could be, and the maximum would be 200. And that would be exactly what we'd be looking for. So you see that the premise of this is, you know, you, you've got two things happening. You're talking about the area, and you're like, what other information do we have? We have to express it in terms of one variable, do the derivative, and see what that gives you. And so that's how you do the maximum and the minimums. Set it equal to a quantity that you're trying to find, area or what have you, and then express it as one variable. Use the derivative to solve the max or min.